Hello and welcome to Craft Academy. This is where we bring you education, advice, hints and tips on some of the very best crafting that we do here at Crate and Craft. And the first one, well the first section this evening is for beginners, but it's very special because it's all about patchwork and quilting. And it's bringing a lovely lady that you all know and love, it's Jenny Raymond. Hello Jenny. Hello Dawn. Fabulous nice to have your to company. You. And this is it's going to be great because you're going to be able to give us all your top tips and lots of ideas aren't you from right from beginners right gonna, from the very beginners because so many people are starting these days and wanting a new hobby mm -hmm. and they want to launch into something completely different and there are various things they should know there is and also many people do not know the basics so we're going to go back to the basics we're going to start off with beginners let's have a little look at what we're talking about so we're going to introduce it to you and explain a little bit more about what patchwork and quilting is your first First lesson is cutting strips, your second cutting squares, lesson three cutting half square triangles and lesson four cutting quarter square triangles. Now that might all sound a little bit like trigonometry, you might be thinking I haven't got a clue where to begin. Now that's our beginner section. We're going to get straight in to Jenny. Now, Jenny, first of all, some of the very useful things that are going to give you professional results are, of course, the tools that make this easy for you. Because if we just want to yes. cut a square or a triangle, that's quite difficult. It is very much so. And you do need, I mean, okay, yes, you can use a pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can use cardboard to draw around. Yes, you can use your old school ruler. But you will not get accuracy. And one of the things in the patchwork world that we really appreciate is being accurate. And if we just take a look at some of the beautiful quilts around us, the patchwork and quilts, accuracy is going to be what you need to get these Because you like to get your points together. Mm, professional results like we're seeing here. Now patchwork and quilting, these are really a piece of heritage. They're handed down through generations. because yes, you'll be making a quilt. You could be making a quilt from memories, from fabrics you've had perhaps in store from your children's clothes. You could be making it for someone's birthday, a wedding anniversary. You could just be making it to snuggle into, but that thing's going to last. And you're going to have it for a number of years and indeed we have heirloom quilts that are in the quilt archives that have been around for hundreds of years and who knows one of the ones absolutely. that's made today might be one of those yeah absolutely so it's a good idea to also put your initials and dates yes. or your name a little bit about it name of the well. quilt on the back would be fantastic now you can do something quite modern some contemporary designs here monochromatic therefore you could do rich colors vintage styles the choice is yours you can tailor this to your home but what gives the creativity are the shapes and the designs that pull it together and the precision cuts so there's a whole host of different templates that you can work with yes, to do this and you're going to take us through some of the I'm basics. I'm going to take you through the basics and some of the templates so okay. we'll just take you that little bit further. And but, what tools do we need right. to get started then? Before you can begin you're obviously going to want fabric. Yes. Fabric comes in a variety of sizes. It comes very often as fat quarters and sometimes you'll be lucky enough to buy a fat quarter pack that's all coordinated. Which is lovely. It makes it easy for you. So easy. But what a fat quarter is, is basically a an almost a square of fabric. It's half a half yard of material. Okay. So if you had a half yard of fabric, it's cut in half. There's something called a thin quarter, which is a quarter of a yard so that's right the way that across. Way, so it's like that, isn't it? That's your quarter. Yeah, your, that's your thin. That's your thin quarter, and it, and it will be, be twice the okay. length. So that's a thin quarter, yep. and there's a fat quarter. Fat Perfect. quarters are common. Okay. But you might not have a fat quarter. You might have something like a jelly roll. And a jelly roll, this is a two and a half inch strip okay. bundle. Nothing edible. Nothing edible. Yep. There are all sorts of other things. There are layer cakes. There are also, I'm um, trying to think of the name for it, honey buns and things like that. So okay. there are lots of different ways of buying fabric that have set sizes. Okay. Or you could just buy yardage. But that would help you if you just wanted to do something with strips. It's, it's much easier if you don't want to worry about cutting out the strips. And indeed, we have templates suspe mm -hmm. specifically designed to fit that size mm -hmm. of fabric. Most people, though, are going to probably have yardage at some point in okay. time. And whether you've got yardage, meterage, call it what you will, or whether you have fat quarters, you're going to need to cut it. And okay. we'll come to the tools in a moment. The next thing you're probably going to want is some way of getting your quarter of an inch seam allowance. Because in the patchwork and quilting world, we need a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And you've got little tools that you can draw around. You've got tape you can stick around that measures a quarter of an inch. And you have a stick you can draw along the side of. Okay, perfect. You're possibly going to want a sewing machine. I say mm -hmm. possibly because you don't have to use a sewing machine. You can do it all by hand. But a oh, sewing machine is going to speed it up. Speed it up, it up no yeah. end. <laughs> Obviously, you're going to want thread. Mm -hmm. and 
and there's a wide variety of thread out there. You might want invisible thread because sometimes when you're doing an applique and you're working across a range of colors, invisible thread is good because you don't have to keep changing the thread. You're obviously going to need pins. Mm -hmm. You'll need a selection of pens. But for me, the most important thing you're going to want is a rotary cutter. Yes. Now, a rotary cutter consists of a very sharp blade, be careful, that rotates when you apply pressure. Okay. This will give you an accurate cut. In addition to the rotary cutter, you're going to want some form of ruler. And there are a wide range of different rulers. We'll talk about those in a moment. And because you can't use the rotary cutter directly on a table or on the breadboard or something like that, a cutting mat will be okay, useful. Okay, so you can get self-healing cutting self mats. Cutting so they're going to protect your work surface as well. Which will do that. Perfect. Now, when it comes to left-handed and right-handed, there are a variety of cutters that you can change from left to right. This one does right-handed, left-handed, mm -hmm. easy peasy. But if you've got a cutter, you, sometimes you have to unscrew the blade and put it on the other side. So we've got the cutter, we've got the mat, I've got some fabric, I'm going to cut a strip. Okay. When it comes to cutting a strip, I mentioned rulers, and there are a wide range of rulers. There is a little mini ruler, can mm -hmm. I just have my piece of card that's there? This little mini ruler measures a two and a half inch strip, and it's worked out in measured out in eighths of an inch and sixteenths down the edge. Now, that's fine. It's small. You might want to have a slightly wider ruler, and this is a three and a half by nine and a half inch ruler. It just makes life a little easier, and it's lefty, righty enabled. You can use black numbers one side, red numbers on the other. Because inches, generally, fabrics are yardage, and a lot of our templates originate from America, yes. and so they tend to be more in inches yes. than centimetres. very much so. And okay. in fact, the biggest driver in the patchwork world is America, which is all feet and inches. Yeah, so that's so why everything tends to be in inches. And okay, if which I like, I'm old school, yeah. I like the inches. But even if you're new school, it's just numbers. Yeah, so it's looking at the numbers. You've got the smaller ruler, which is here, mm -hmm. which is a 12 and a half by six and a half. Great for taking to classes, great for sort of working in a smaller space. Or if you wanted to have the ruler I would tend to start off with, that is the big daddy, where you've got 24 inches by six and a half inches. Again, all marked out at and this is, of an inch And this is, you can see here, this is the easy rule too. Now this is the one that most people with patchwork and quilting do we'll go have. for. Yes. Because this gives you the length across mm -hmm. your yardage, Right across it. it, yes, Perfect. completely. Okay. So that's the, the top tip for that particular one. Right, so we have the ruler, we yep. have the fabric. I'm going to cut my first strip. If you take your length of fabric, mm -hmm. even if you've got a fat quarter, you want to fold it in half and line up the selvage. So I'm lining up the selvage. And when we talk about selvage, this is this the, is edge, the of edge of the fabric, fabric that you can see. And it will very often have little holes in it. I don't know whether we can get the camera near enough to see the little holes. That is the selvage down there. Okay. And the little holes are where it was held onto the bolt of fabric okay. when it won the loom, when it was woven. Mm -hmm. Right, I fold it in half once, I'm going to yeah. fold it in half again, okay. bringing the centre fold to touch the selvages. Having got to this stage, you'll need to trim the edge off. Now I am right-handed, and to begin to trim the edge off, I'm going to put the fabric on the right-hand side. Okay. Taking my ruler, and mm -hmm. you'll see why this ruler is so useful, is it fits across the fabric. Let's move those nice fat quarters out of the way. I'm going to pop the ruler on the top there and level up this edge of the fabric with that side of the ruler. I'm not looking at the cutting mat, I'm simply working on the ruler. Bring the ruler as near as you can do to the raw edge of the material, save fabric. Take the rotary cutter. Take the guard off the rotary cutter. Now, this is most important you take the guard off at the beginning. Start your cutting a fraction before the be beginning of the material, so a fraction before. Hand goes firmly on the ruler. Push the blade directly up the side of the ruler and mm -hmm. keep on pushing, keep on pushing until you come to the end. This will, let me go through it again, cut a thin strip right off your fabric. And now you've I've got gone a through lovely, four layers I've of gone fabric. Four layers quite of fabric. Easy, haven't yes. you? Okay. Having cut myself a nice straight end, mm -hmm. because I am right-handed, I'm going to turn the fabric round. Now you could, if you wanted to, walk to the other side of the table yeah. or you could turn the board round. Having turned the fabric round, I'm going to cut from here a strip. Now you can cut your strip any size you like, mm -hmm. up to the width of the ruler. If you wanted to cut a wider strip, then that's when I would use the cutting mat. 
I would bring the edge of the fabric to the edge of the cutting mat. Because you've got your inches. And you've got your feet and inches on You've actually got all of your inches down there. All the way along the edge there. So if I wanted a 10 inch strip, I could cut a 10 inch strip. The main thing for having the fabric on my right, because I am right handed, and bringing the ruler in from the left, is the ruler is now sitting on top of the piece of fabric. Yeah. It's protecting it. Hand goes firmly on the ruler, guard comes off the cutter, slide up the edge here, move your hand up the ruler as you go, and that stops having those funny little V-shaped nicks you can get in the fabric. Okay. That is a nice and accurate strip. And you can see strip. here that we have got, what, how many inches have we two got? And a One, two, two and a half inches. Yes. You can see we've got two and a half inches across there. And that will be parallel all the way down, so you can right match the two fabric. Yes, Perfect. Yes. And if I wanted a bigger one, let's put that to one side. I'm going to cut a four and a half inch one now. So there is my fabric. I'm keeping it like that. The edge is still beautifully straight. Mm -hmm. Put the ruler on the top. I want four and a half. Now, on this particular ruler, you've got your four and a half inch measurement is actually here. Yes. Four and a half. Turn the ruler around. Lay it on there so your four and a half inches goes mm -hmm. right up the edge of the fabric there. The Perfect. ruler is now covering up four and a half inches. Hand firmly on the ruler, guard off your cutter, start cutting a bit before. Now we haven't talked about safety. When you get to the end there, at mm -hmm. that second, before yes. you raise the cutter, you put the guard on. You do not bring the cutter up and think, ooh, ooh, why don't I put the blade, cover the blade up now? You do it the second your hand okay. stops cutting. That's a handy tip and that will stop the accidents okay. happening. Once you've got your strip, you can do a variety of things. Yes. Again. So, suppose I were to cut three strips. Let's move that out of the way. If I cut three strips of fabric and join them together, I could make myself a striped band. Mm -hmm. And I've got three strips. I happen to have used two and a half inch yeah. strips. So these get stitched together on the sewing machine, preferably with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And if you weren't sure about your quarter of an inch seam allowance, you could use one of these tools to draw your seam allowance down the side to sew on it. Okay. Or you could indulge in a quarter of an inch foot for your sewing machine. Some sewing machines do actually have the measurements on the metal plate, they do don't indeed. they? So you can keep it lined up perfectly. And you can most certainly do that. Or you can move the needle and set the needle at a quarter of an inch from this edge of okay. the press. Depending foot. again on your machine. On the model machine. Quarter of an inch would be nice, but in the beginning, just sewing a panel of strips together, your seam allowance is can not Can I ask vital. you something that might Fine. be quite basic? What colour of thread would you use for that combination? Is there a guideline? Would you just use white or would you I say whatever my predominant colour is? I probably would use a sort of mid tone. I mean, grey is one of the best threads to use it because will. it doesn't really have any okay. set colour to it. So you wouldn't say it. I've got to use purple here? No, I wouldn't say I've got to use purple. Because your purple might show through no. on the green. I tend to also like to press my seams open and flat, but these days sewing machines sew with such a small stitch that actually it's not going to show even if you did use possibly not quite the right okay. colour thread. Mm -hmm. But grey's a very good choice. Okay, that's a good tip then. Having got my strips together, if I wanted to make a very quick design, mm -hmm. take your strip band and your rotary cutting ruler, put the rotary cutting ruler on it, and if you measure the width of the strip band, now technically it should measure six and a half inches because I cut two and a half inch mm -hmm. strips, I've taken off the seam allowance. So it should be six? It should be six okay. because each strip will actually be two inches when I've sewn it because we lose quarter of an inch for this side and quarter of an inch for that side. So I've got so three lots of two. then have three two inch plus strips. Plus a half an okay. inch. Yeah, fully Trim your selvage off the end there. Mine does measure six and a half, but if it only measures six and a bit, then you're going to cut six and a bit squares. Right. Turn the band round, because I'm right-handed. I'll tell you in a moment what you're going to do if you're left-handed. Pop the ruler on the top. I'm going to measure a six and a half inch square. Now, my ruler happens to be six and a half inches, so I can cut straight up there. And I've got a nice square. If I were to do this four times... Is that another benefit times, of having a larger ruler? It, but you can then cut larger pieces very easily. Because it's got automatically six and a half yes. inches, so you know you've always got a six inch square. Which is half a 12 inch square, and many patchwork designs are based on okay. six inches so and 12 inches. So that's another reason why the yes. large easy rule tool is, is a worthwhile investment. So that's number three and number four. So I've got four squares. And literally anybody can do this. Your seam allowance isn't correct. Just adjust the size of square you cut to suit. If we were to take these four squares, we could lay them out very simply and make a quick design 
that would work something like this. Perfect. And there you have a very quick patchwork design. That's wonderful. That's and so they could be to stitched achieve. together extremely easily. Now, okay. that's cutting strips. Okay. You might want to, though, cut squares. Okay, let's move on to this one here. And in the second section, squares. When it comes to cutting squares, you have a variety of square rulers. And I've got a whole load of them here. We have a four and a half inch square. I've got a six and a half inch square. I've got a nine and a half inch square. Let's pop those down there. Bigger and bigger. And we've got the big daddy of them all, the 12 and a half inch square. Now again, Jenny, if you were just beginning, which would you recommend to go for? Because it can be confusing and you can't always afford to, to afford buy it. all of these. In an ideal world, I'd have the big one. Would you? Because many patchwork blocks are 12 and a half inches when raw edge to raw edge. Mm -hmm. So it means you can square off a block to the correct size easily. Yeah. If I were a bit stuck for perhaps space, then the nine and a half inch one might be a little bit better. It's that little bit smaller. Okay. And of course you can always measure using the square and add a ruler to increase the okay. area you're working with. The little ones are great for taking to classes. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to use the four and a half inch one fairly frequently simply because there's a design that I teach that uses a four and a half inch square, but it's not necessary because with any of the other squares, you can cut any size of square you like. So let's show them how to. Okay. If you're going to cut squares, let's take a piece of fabric and I'm going to cut from this square fabric, I don't know, let's cut a five inch square. Okay. Open your fabric out, take mm -hmm. one of the square rulers, and I'll use the big one, because what you can cut with the big one, you can cut with all of the others. But the it also the gives you all half. the gradiated sizes. It gives sizes. me all the gradiated sizes. Lay the ruler onto the fabric. If it's got a straight edge, put the edge of the square on the straight yeah. edge. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to trim off the side down here. Now, I said five inches. There on this side is my five inch mm -hmm. mark written in red. Okay. It's black over there. Trim off slightly more than the desired amount. So I've cut it back to six inches. It's nice and straight along there. So mm -hmm. I've got a right angle. Okay. I'm now going to turn the fabric completely round so that the fabric is on my right and the ruler is going to come in from my left and it sort of eats its way onto the fabric, onto the fabric, and it stops when it's five inches there and five inches there. Okay, perfect. If I wanted, say, a five and a half inch one, I can move it you in and up a bit, etc. Okay. And I will cut up this side and along the top. Now, when it comes to rotary cutting, you can cut across your body this way because mm -hmm. should I slip, I'm going to go that way yeah. and I'm not going to damage myself. At no point in time do you ever want to cut towards yourself no. because this thing is sharp. Mm -hmm. Right, there is a five inch square cut. Okay. Now, Perfect. I did mention left-handed people. Suppose you are left-handed mm -hmm. and you're really struggling. If you're going to be left-handed, you put the fabric like this mm -hmm. and you will need to trim a corner off to suit. So pop the ruler on top there, get the ruler the right way around. So there's my one there. And I've got a fairly good right angle there, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry about trimming anything off. But if I were going to cut it, I'd cut up there and along the yes. top. Yes, okay. Flip the fabric round. So this is for left-handed people. The fabric is now sitting here and the ruler will eat its way in from this corner and it comes in and in and in and in until it's covering up the desired amount of fabric. Then you will pick up your rotary cutter, you will cut up there and along okay. there. Perfect. So the tools are suitable for right-handed and left-handed people. Which is good, that's what Which we want to know. Which is super. Yes. Now, if you were to cut, say, nine squares, yeah. we could create a very classic design called a nine patch, which amazingly is made from nine squares. So I've got nine squares all the same size. I happen to have cut four and a half inch squares and I'm going to lay them out like this. Different colour in the middle. Now there. this could be the front of a cushion cover. This could there? indeed be the front of a cushion cover. And this is sort of first baby steps into patchwork. Okay. There are your nine squares. Now, in an ideal world, you would sew these together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but 
As they're all the same shape, mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter if your seam allowance was not correct, as long as it was consistent. Okay. You might end up with a slightly smaller or a slightly bigger block yes, than you should have, that. but it doesn't matter. Okay, so I want to ask you, yes. where do you start to sew and how would you sew? Would you sew all along one line like that? And I would actually sew, how would you sew? I sew them together into two, into two and join that pair to that pair. Right. Because we like in the patchwork world to match up your seams. Right. And that will give me an easy seam junction. Right, okay. I will then join those two together and put it on the end because in fact that's the same seam junction there as that one is. You've then got one row of three and when you've fitted those together, you fit that on the bottom of it and you'd have to line up that lot of seams and that lot of seams. Okay, wonderful. Now, when you've done your piecing together, you're going to end up with a square that'll look something like this. Okay. Perfectly plain square of fabric. Now, mm -hmm. your seams again, I like to press open and flat because I think you get a clearer junction and it makes it a little bit easier for when you're doing any quilting because it lies a little flatter. A very quick eye design you could mm -hmm. do with this is something called a disappearing nine patch. And let me show you a disappearing nine patch. There we have a disappearing nine patch. If you'd like to get it out okay. and hold I it around there. Will do. This and is vibrant, Jenny. This is something that real beginners could easily, easily do. Now it's compared, composed of blocks, and the block is actually this square, this, it's that area there. Now this you create with clever cutting of what with you've got clever there. Are you show us that exactly quickly? what I'm going to do okay, right let's, now. Let's show you so that So let's quickly. put this down. I'm going to use the slightly... And this, because you look at that, I would look at that and think that's a bit too complicated for me to start off with, but you're going to show us I'm how easy it actually exactly is how you're going to do it. with this format. What you want to do is to measure the size of the square that's been stitched on both sides. So let me turn my ruler around the right way. Mine amazingly measures four inches. Yours may not. Whatever it measures is divide that measurement in two. So four divided by two is two inches. Put your ruler, and I'm lining up the ruler so that my ruler is positioned exactly in the center of these squares. The measurement here and the measurement there being the same. Guard off your cutter, cut up the middle. Now leave the block as it is, don't move it. Turn the ruler around the other way, replace the ruler, and make the same cut. So what I've done now is I've just cut my block into four. Okay. And all I'm going to do to create that design is turn one of those round and the other one <laughs> round. And, and that's there your is very design. complex design. Yes. That's amazing, isn't yeah, it? That is so, so simple. So easy. It's called a disappearing nine patch and you can see exactly why mm, because fabulous. there's my nine patch make your two cuts and hey presto it disappears yeah, that's and wonderful. whether you go this away or that away is totally irrelevant lovely okay right that's so we can cut squares done. we can cut strips okay what about a quarter square oh now this and is getting a, a bit more square. technical now in the patchwork world and again there are lots and lots and lots of templates you start off with a baby one there are the mini ones, now these fit your jelly rolls. So if you've got a jelly roll, you'll want a quarter of okay. those little tiny weeny ones. Chip, can you pass me the jelly roll? Just to remind everybody. There is your jelly roll. And that one is specifically just designed fit. just mm. to fit. Then you've got, and they go up in various sizes, you've got the four and a half inch one that makes half a four and a half inch square. You've got a six and a half inch one. And you've got the 10 and a half inch one. And there's your ten and a half inch one. Nice, great, big one. Okay. Around the right way. And they're all marked out in half inches, all up and down the sides. Perfect. And you'll see how they're used in just a moment. Okay, lovely. In the patchwork world, half a square is in fact a really useful thing to understand. And the reason why it's called half a square is strangely two of these, when put together, make a square. This particular template scores because it's, let's have the paper back if I may. Okay. Thank you. The top of it here is yeah. missing a bit. Now, why do they do that? Well, it saves three eighths of an inch. Ooh, a fabric. And actually it does add up over time. It also means it helps in the accuracy. Now, that little bit there is not broken. It's meant to have a point on so it. So when but you get it, don't think no, it's broken. No, it's not broken at all. This works in a really clever way. I think the lady who designed these templates had a very bright mm. idea. Okay. How are they going to get cut? 
Okay. Right. I've cut again a four and a half inch. So you've already strip. cut your strips. We've already cut strips. And we've shown you this how to do that. This is four and a half inches. Going to take the little one, mm -hmm. although they all work in exactly the same way. Right. Place the little one onto the fabric, and it fits exactly. There's a funny little black bit down the bottom there. Don't worry about that. You're going to take the rotary cutter and push the cutter firmly up the edge of the template. I didn't start quite early enough, so let me cut through that little bit. This gives me two triangles. I okay. tend to cut my fabric folded double. So you've got two at the I've same time. I've got two. Yeah. Now, I would like some more. To get the next lot, if you turn the template over mm -hmm. like that, yeah. this is where, when you lay this template on the fabric, you want to get it so that that little black point hangs off the end. Uh -huh. And you will see ah, that... so this is bringing you straight places. edges in for your seams. Absolutely. Okay. And this is giving you... Move that little bit off the end there, where I miscut it, just a fraction. This will end up with a shape that has a flat point, flat bit one end and a point the other, and exactly the same on that one. Mm -hmm. Now, you're obviously not going to take two colours and stitch them together because no, that would be point. a little silly. Yeah. So we want another colour. Yes. So here I have a little bit of green. Let me use the bigger one because some people might like to have this. And the same thing, it's a four and a half inch strip. So there's my four and a half inches. Lay the fabric, the template on top of the fabric. Cut up the side. But again, if you choose to go for the larger one, so in all aspects, Jenny, if we went for larger templates, that's going to give you more sizes. It gives more you more sizes more easily. Okay. And I, get it I now. think if I were going to have one of these, I would most certainly think about either having this one or going for the big daddy. Because I think that's the confusing thing. Yes. If you're starting, you see so many different <gasps> Which components. Which one do that you I think, have? Yeah, what yeah. do I have to yeah. get? This is great for classes, it's mm -hmm. great for small projects, mm. it's great for working miniature. Very often I would have the middle one. I find in this particular range, I think the middle one is possibly the easiest. Okay. The big one is nice, but it is large. Okay, good tip. Right, having got my two triangles, these can be stitched together. Now the amazing thing about that happens when you sew these things together is they will end up exactly the same size as one of those cut four and a right. half inch now squares. Now we've got both corners, that little bit cut off there. Is if that you right? have both, it doesn't you... really matter. Okay. Sometimes you will end up and find you've got one corner one end and a pointy bit the other end. You can't always get it so they're exactly right. Okay. But what it does help your seam allowance is your seam will go through where the two fabrics cross over. Mm -hmm. So let me just demonstrate it on this sewing machine. Okay. Now you have a little tip there, don't you? You're the actually good using old thread a saver. Of, of yes. Fabric already that's run through there, which saves your thread, so it's not going to dip down. It will also stop the needle from unthreading. Okay. It stops the thread from jumping around in the take-up lever, messing around in the bottom bobbin, mm -hmm. and it really smooths out the stitching. So I'm going to sew with regular size stitch length, and you will have a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Sewing off that little scrap, down the edge of the fabric, keeping the edge of the presser foot on the edge of the material, all the way down, all Which the way is down. Which denoting your, your quarter of an inch. Absolutely. When you get to the very bottom, rescue your little scrap from the back there. Let's rescue the little scrap. Cut him off. And he's all ready to be put back on the other end, ready for the next go. So and wasting any this thread. will save a fortune well, in because the thread. You could, when you pull through, you might lose sort of 12 or 20 inches of thread. Yeah. Um, so I know it's, it's maybe being a little bit thrifty, but overall it could be a whole reel but of thread think with of the quilt. mess on the carpet. Yeah. You no longer yeah, have that. No. It's all sort of contained. And it's frustrating sometimes when the thread does go down and you're pulling it back out again and you're getting a build up. Yeah, yeah good tip. When you sew them together, mm -hmm. what I would suggest you do then is you press the back seam open and flat. Okay. Because again, this spreads the load, makes it a little bit flatter. And this piece is now exactly the same, the same size as standard ones. that one. Perfect. Now, I've cut a four and a half inch strip to do them both. Mm -hmm. When I've sewn around all the sides of this, it will be a four inch square. Now, a very quick design could be made by taking some of these and if I were to do this effect four times and make my four half square triangles into the squares, mm. take one further plain square, a four and a half inch one, four others, 
I can make another nine patch which has a name. And the name of this nine patch is something called the Amish Friendship Star. And now, patchwork quilting, a like lot of this. designs come from the Amish, don't they? They, they were do prolific indeed. in patchwork quilting. And they still are. Mm. And in fact, if you go to that part of America, there are some absolutely fabulous, fabulous... Don't they purposely do something wrong in each of their quilts? Yes, because so no, no one is perfect. No. Yeah, and no, there is your friendship star. Very that. simple to do. And Beautiful. again, I would sew it together, these two together, these two together, those two together. We've got a fabulous example on the wall behind us, Johnny, haven't we, of this? Uh, the Amish Friendship Star is, here we are, one you can wave around. There we go. And we've got another one here at the front to show you. So nice, a nice That's little it. table runner here. And again, I love the point that you made before. You know, if you have children that have outgrown their clothes, rather than actually throwing those clothes away, if you've got pretty dresses and things like that, use those materials to actually create a beautiful patchwork quilt. So when your your daughter, obviously, yes. is older, she's got all of those memories of her childhood clothes. Mm -hmm. I think that's a fabulous idea. And, and it will go on and go on forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So we can now okay. do half squares. Okay. Let's look at a quarter square. Okay. Right, this is just here to show you. See, when you understand the half squares, you can make them any size Ooh, that's pretty you like. Tiny though, isn't it? But this is the whole thing about patchwork, it's being picky about your points yes. and with the right tools the cutting tools the templates you can get these points accurate right okay. let's go for our quarter squares now you might say to yourself what is a quarter square well here we've only got two templates we've got the regular size one and this one's actually has a slightly strange name although it's a quarter square it's called a companion angle and we've got a mini one here, which works in conjunction with your jelly rolls, your two and a half inch strips. What a quarter square actually is, strange enough, is a quarter of a square. And the thing you need to be aware of is that a half square and a quarter square, although they may look like the same sort of triangle, this is a triangle, they don't behave in the same way. Let me show you how they behave. That is a half square triangle, which will have one stretchy side and two straight sides. Okay. If we cut a quarter square triangle, and for this time I'm going to use a two and a half inch strip. And the reason for using a two and a half inch strip is I'm working in four inch blocks. Okay. Two inches is half of four. Yeah. Add on the seam allowances, that gives you four and two and a half inches. Okay. The ruler helps you because down the sides, of the ruler, it has the measurement of the finished size of the square. So this is a four inch finished square. I will need to cut a two and a half inch strip because this is a quarter square. Okay. Take your fabrics, lay the ruler on the top there, align it with the layers of the fabric at the bottom there, find the rotary cutter, cut up one side. Now you will not be cutting towards yourself because that would be totally wrong. Flip the fabric over, replace the template and cut up the other side so you're always cutting away from you. That is a quarter square. Four of these will fit together. Now look at the difference between the two. This one has one straight side and two stretches. Right. This one has one stretchy side and two straights. Okay. They work in very different ways. Right. If I were to cut out four of these in different colours, mm -hmm. I would end up with four triangles I could put together. So let me show them all. We've got them here. Four triangles. You've got one of those, one of those, and you've got sort of the classic egg timer. One there mm -hmm. and one there. Okay. Now, I can stitch these together, and I would sew them together. I'd sew two together to make a half, two together to make a half. So you'd end up with these two pieces. And then down the middle. And then straight down the middle and press the seam open and flat. Mm -hmm. If you were to do this by changing your, you could use it as a border if you wanted to. So here we have the block piece together mm -hmm. and I could use these as a border. Or if I put them together in a certain way, look, I get a little yeah. pinwheel in the middle. Mm -hmm. There we go. Perfect. Or I could have them like that. I think the wonderful thing about patchwork Dawn, is that you've got so many different things you can yeah, do. Yeah, you it. can play around you with can them. indeed. It's, it's quite, in a way, it's like simple mathematics, isn't it? Yes. To get it lined up like that. But of course, you're not having to do any measuring if you have the templates. No, no. 
you could make your designs out of two colours and two slightly different colours because a very good classic design that you could do with these, and I've got four of these cut out, so I cut four half square triangles in the dark purple, four in the light purple, eight in the green. In between, because these measure the same, I could lay my square, so let's put one of those there. Have we got another one of those? I thought I had. There's so many there here. There's Thank you. Measures Lovely squares. jobs. There they are. Super. One there. One there. And one there. And let's put one of these in the middle. And now I've got a design called the Ohio that's beautiful. Star. Yes, that's which the could look like the one I have here. That's very pretty. And again, you've created all of that from technically the, the triangles and the squares. Yes. Yes, because when you understand the principle for cutting your squares and your triangles, the world is your oyster. Mm -hmm. And you can move on and create a wide range of very many different designs. So that is your quarter squares and your half squares, how to cut your squares, in the first place and how to cut And that strips. concludes our beginners section. Of course, there is so many more things that you can be doing with patchwork quilting. We are just trying to simplify it for anybody who would like to get started. And it's all part of our fabulous Craft Academy.